Welcome everyone to the Low Fi Poly Side Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pickering. That's right. Low Fi as in low fidelity, low quality, in your face, messy as can be global news show. Here we're gonna talk about our famous question: what's going on in the world today? And it's Thursday. Time for that lo-fi global news fresh off that press. From the Africa Live section of the BBC. Can five million trees make a difference in Ghana? You know, African countries are always getting negative news coverage. I thought, let's make today a little different. And while this story does discuss the sad news that most of Ghana's natural OG forest has been cut down, torn down, or burned down, but this story also talks about hope. You see, the government in Ghana is putting out a call to all its people, asking everyone to do their part. And together, plant five million trees across the country to repair the past damage that's been done. And sure, the question is being asked, is five million trees really enough? And you know, the idea is being floated that more trees are needed, definitely, without a doubt. And if you ask me, we can always do with planting more trees. But this is an important step forward for Ghana. You know, the government itself is calling on people to help out, raising awareness to do their part to reach this initial goal. You see, you have to start somewhere. And while five million trees may not be enough today, who's to say that you can't add an additional 10 million tomorrow? Next up, Source, NPR's Asia section. Hong Kong's Apple Daily to shut down this weekend after having its assets frozen. We've been talking about the pro-democracy Hong Kong newspaper for over a year now. How its owner Jimmy Lay and several other high-ranking people have been arrested and charged with varying crimes. Mostly we could sum it up as crimes against the state under the new national security law. We've talked about how in the past the newspaper offices were raided by Hong Kong police how this was a targeting of the last pro-democracy newspaper in Hong Kong, but how the people of the paper have always kept going strong with lots and lots of support from the community. That is until last week when the Chinese government froze Apple Daily's bank accounts and assets. And the paper announced now, this coming Saturday, will be the newspaper's last print edition. Lofi Nation, I don't know how many times we've talked about it, But this is exactly what we mean when we say democracy is in decline across the world. This, in a real world, real time context, is an example of democratic backsliding. We hope to see you stay alive in some online version, Apple Daily. Stay strong. Now, moving forward, because we never move on from anything. Source, Reuters UK section. Russia warns Britain it will bomb ships next time. Whoa, 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 what in the hell is going on here, right? Russia, what are we talking about bombing UK ships for? We really don't need this kind of stuff in the world right now. Well, let's jump into it, listeners. This story begins back in 2014, when major political unrest began in Ukraine, and the government soused it by pro-democracy protesters because the government was going too pro-Moscow for the people's liking. So the government collapsed. But in the midst of all of that, in the Ukrainian region of Crimea, Soldiers in green army gear started showing up all over the place. And the world said, hey, Russia, hey, Russia, what are you doing in Crimea? That's Ukraine. Get out of there. And Russia said, hey, it ain't us. Later, Crimea claims its independence from Ukraine. Then it's annexed and officially becomes part of Russia. And Russia calmly says, very nonchalantly, look, everyone, those green soldier men, All right, they were Russian people. But too late, Crimea is ours. So, that's the annexation of Crimea and the stealing of Ukrainian territory by Russia. And most of the world, though, does not recognize Crimea as part of Russia. They still recognize it as part of Ukraine. Now, fast forward to this week. A British naval vessel, a destroyer, was cruising around the waters near Crimea, which, again, everyone still says is part of Ukraine. But apparently... The Russian Navy disagrees with this. And as the story goes, from Russia's perspective, they chased the ship out of Russian waters using multiple Navy ships, aircrafts, and even firing warning shots at the British ship. And now Russia's saying, hey, UK, you pull this shit again? We'll bomb your ship, man. The UK? Their side of it? No warning shots were fired, and it didn't go down like that at all. It's all Russian lies. And they didn't do anything wrong because they were in Ukrainian waters. Craziness, right? I mean, really, this is truly your stereotypical international relations equivalent of he said, she said bullshit. 
but we'll keep you updated as we find out more for sure, lo-fi listeners. And our following story comes from the Latin America section of the BBC. Nicaragua political arrest lead Argentina and Mexico to recall envoys. All right, here's an update to our continuing coverage of Nicaraguan presidential election season, where we've already talked about a leading potential presidential candidate being arrested, and now several others being arrested. Journalists being arrested, offices being raided, and more and more and more, as basically President Ortega of Nicaragua is doing everything he can to make sure no one runs against him that could win. Well now, Argentina and Mexico are showing their disapproval by pulling their ambassadors out of the country. You know, and we'll keep you informed about what's going on as we get closer for the next five months out. But things aren't looking good. And is there really anything that can come from Argentina and Mexico pulling their ambassadors? Not really. It's not going to make President Ortega bring democracy back. But it's still an important move. It still signals to his government that, hey, other Latin American countries, they're watching. And they don't like what they're seeing. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the day. And talking about other people watching NPR's science section. Alien planet hunters and hundreds of nearby star systems could spot Earth. Now this is just straight up a lo-fi cool read, people. The short version is that we can see some stars that are pretty similar to Earth in some respects. And that are only about a dozen light years away. And in 29 years, if they got life and the tech like we do, in 29 years, they will be able to see us. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details about why they can't see us yet, even if they are there, and even if they do have the tech. But the short version is, it's because stars, the galaxy, the universe is constantly moving, meaning stars that we can see this decade. We may not be able to see them next decade because of how the different galaxies are moving around in space. You know, pretty cool, right? I mean, especially when you think about life being out there in the universe. A lot of people like to say just because we haven't found life in space yet, it doesn't exist. But remember, the stars are constantly shifting. And it could very well be that they haven't shifted quite right yet for us to see truly what's out there in the universe. And that, my friends, is a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. Issue 7 of Letters of the Lo-Fi poli came out Saturday. Get at me to be added to the emailing list. Always remember that Lo-Fi poli is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Peace and well-being to all my human beings out there. Much love and always the best. Pickering, signing off. <laughs>